Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1193. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1191 to 1194, click on the link below the video. In this video, I want a formula that will tell me I've entered Sue Incorporated once, I've entered Fran and Company once, I've entered Sue Incorporated twice or it'll tell us the order in which we've entered, the first one, the second one, and if we enter any new ones below, it'll tell us the third, fourth. Now there's two ways we can do this. I'm going to use just a straight formula in a table, right? But the problem with this is if I copy it down this many rows here, if I add any new records, then I have to grab the formula and copy it down. The second method will involve the Excel table, which automatically has expanding ranges. Now, the table formula is going to be more complicated than this, so there, there is a trade-off. All right, let's see how to do this. We're simply going to use count ifs, and this is a great function for counting with one or more condition, the criteria range. Now, I need this to be an expandable range as I copy down, so I type a colon. Now, the first A4 needs to be locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 once and twice. That 4 is locked, but the second one is not. So as I copy the formula down, the blue range will expand, meaning 4 will go to 5 and then to 6, and that will remain locked. Now I comma the criteria. I'm always looking one cell to my left. Close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it down. Now the first thing is let's just go F2 and notice, yeah, there's that expandable range. The 4 is locked, but that 6 is free to move. All the way down here you can see it goes to 10, an expandable range. Ah, and it looks like it's working. If I type Fran and Enter, boom, it's working. Now I want to turn these zeros off, so I'm going to come up and amend this. F2, I need a logical test inside an if function. Now there's a bunch of logical tests we could use here. I'm going to use is blank function. And I want you to look at this. It says checks whether the reference is to an empty cell and returns true or false. Tab. So I'm going to say, are you equal to an empty cell? If that's true, comma, I want to show nothing in the syntax is double quote, double quote. That's what you put inside a formula to show nothing. It's actually a zero length text string. So that'll show nothing. Otherwise, if this comes out false, meaning it's not empty, then I run my count ifs. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. And now if I type Sue, Enter, Rim, Enter, it's working fine. Now again, the problem is when I get down to here, I'm going to have to recopy the formula. So let's look at the Excel table feature. Now when we convert this to an Excel table, as we enter new records, the actual formula will automatically go down however far we go. Now let's click in a single cell, Insert Table, or Control-T. My table has headers, click OK. Now, let's just copy this formula over here, right? Control C and paste it over here and see if it would work. I'm going to copy it down. Now, it looks like it's going to work, but watch what happens if I type a new record 3, 3. If I type another Sue 4, 4, it just doesn't work. It's a known problem with Excel tables. Control Z, 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 Z. So what we're going to have to do is get a little tricky here. We'll run our same count ifs, but if we click right there, yes, that's table formula nomenclature, and that will work as a relative cell references. In table formula nomenclature, you always have your field names in square brackets, and for relative cell reference, you have that at symbol. So I would like to go colon, but here's where I'm going to have to get tricky. I'm going to have to use the index function to always look up the first item in the customers column. So you're ready, index. It's a lookup function. The array, I'm simply going to highlight the whole column. There's the table formula nomenclature or structured references square brackets, but that means the whole column. So the lookup array, those are the things that index can possibly look up, the customer column, right? comma, and then the row number or the relative position, I hard code 1 in. And it will always look up the first cell reference. Close parentheses. Let's do this, comma. Boop, there's the relative cell reference in table formula nomenclature. Close parentheses, Control-Enter, copy it down. Now, 
F2, and let's just show you. The index is, sure enough, F9, looking up a single value. But when I highlight the entire range, remember, it's that little colon right there that gives it the context of a range of cells. Then index knows to F9, treat it as a cell reference. And even though we see it here as the whole range of values, internally, it looked up the cell reference, Control Z. So that's how you do it. And what's so cool about this count ifs is, yes, we have to do the strange thing with index. But as we add new records, SU tab, SU tab, RIM company tab, it works perfectly. And the table feature copies it down. All right, two different ways to create an automatic count as you enter text. Either the Excel table feature and this unusual way of creating an expandable range, or our count ifs and an if. All right, we'll see you next video.